Now, what in nature doesn't change? You tell me. Because I sure would like to know why I don't look the same way I looked 50 years ago. <laughs> That's a good question. Right? You know, you know, you know the, 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 the first one tells us, so people want to change and they want to remain the same. Uh, exactly. Exactly. You, I mean, what, 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 uh, what a confusion. What, what a confusion. You know, it, as, a, as, a, as a body worker and massage therapist, one of the uh, modalities that I worked on required that we did a postural and a gait analysis before we started to work on the client or the patient. And one of the uh, uh, indicators for emotional instability was a posture where the head rotated in one direction and the thoracic spine rotated in another. So basically, if you can see that, and it's very slight, but just that much of a, of a change puts the nose in one direction and the sternum in another. So it means the head is walking in one direction and the heart is walking in another direction. And this, this, very slight adjustment changes completely the rhythmic function of your entire organ system, system of your organs. So it changed the way your respiratory system work, it changed the way your heart and circulatory system work, it changed the way your digestive system work. Just because you were not lined up. You were not lined up. So this is a question that we must ask ourselves. Is my head and my heart lined up with one another? Am I working against myself? Or am I working with myself? Do I trust myself? I can't possibly trust myself if I'm moving in one direction and the other part of me is moving in another. So, self-examination is critical. So true. <laughs> yeah, it's critical. All right. Um, you were also saying something in line with um, living your life, your best life, in the service of order. And yes. again, this is in, in what we have discussed before. No? That we need to understand that we are all part of the whole. Yes. If you take, um, if we take each of us out, we cannot really function as a whole. I, I don't know if there is anything you want to say about that in relation to what you do in your profession, in your work, uh, that you're you actually in the service of other people. I find that to be really very important. What do you want to say about that to help the people to understand what you do? Well, I'm retired. <laughs> so, um, in my life, I have been a, uh, a professional performance artist. And I felt that I was in service because we made people happy. Um, we, we gave people encouragement and we gave people joy to see us um, celebrating our bodies and celebrating musicians and celebrating stories. I was a teacher, so I, I, I taught I taught dance and um, and uh, performing arts to students over a period of 20 years, and influenced very many, um, very many of whom I am still in contact with, which which I, I think is incredible. I have a student that I worked with in the in the 80s, in the 1980s, and he somehow found me. Um, through social media and told me that he was living in Australia and he often talked to his wife about me because of the way he was influenced by what he learned from me. And he works as a, an emergency, he's a, a, 
an, an, uh, 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 an emergency health person. So he drives an ambulance and they go and pick people up. I guess they, he's an EMS service person. And I just thought, God, from going from being a dancer to working in emergency services on the other side of the world, that someone carried my name to the other side of the world in a positive way. That's powerful. Absolutely. That's powerful. Absolutely. And being a teacher and then um, helping people realize their dreams, working with a documentary filmmaker that, that made movies about something that interested me, but then I helped him come to the end of his career in, in, a, in a loving way, in an industry that was really very hostile to him. And then to um, come repatriate back to the United States, because I was living in Europe at the time, uh, repatriating back to the United States and working in the arts and helping other artists navigate funding and navigate uh, organization, administration and organization, and then, you know, working, going after 9-11, going to Texas to work in um, scientific science and scientific research and development in, um, in, uh, in technology. Do that. I told you I'm a college dropout, right? I told you that I'm a dancer, right? How do you go from being a dancer to being involved in scientific research and development at NASA? By saying, yes, I'm open. I'm open. I'm open to learn. I am open to understanding. God bless. This was, um, again, six degrees of separation. Again. I went to Texas to work with Dr. Mae Jemison, the first African-American female astronaut, to go into space. And, and it was incredible working with her and getting to know her. And you talk about multiple intelligences. Good God. It was because of her that I realized how smart I was. I didn't know that until I met her. And not that I could ever compare my education or my, my, my educational pedigree or, or what I knew or what my experiences were with hers. But she lit a fire under me. She made me understand that there was absolutely no limit to how much I was entitled to know.